Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Atrophy of Soul and today we will be talking about Resident Evil 7. A few years ago I composed a video called Resident Evil and Degeneration which went through each mainline title in the series up until that point in history and outlined how the franchise had lost its identity over the years. Many of the ideas that I presented in that video have been reintegrated into the series with the franchise's latest two entries, Resident Evil Revelations 2 and Resident Evil 7 respectively. The release of these two games marks a return to form for a series that has been wavering in quality since the release of Resident Evil 5. Resident Evil 6 in particular was in many ways where the series truly hit rock bottom. It was a bloated, unfocused mess of truly intriguing game design elements that were never effectively fleshed out fully. However, as a video game in and of itself, disassociated from the legacy of the Resident Evil name, Resident Evil 6 is quite a fun experience if you can overlook its many, many, many blemishes. There's no denying that Resident Evil 6 was brimming with content, but a wealth of mediocre content pales in comparison to a consistently excellent experience that lasts no more than a handful of hours. The schizophrenic design philosophy that permeated RE6 was in my view a feeble attempt from the game developers to take advantage of the popularity of the third and first person shooter genres whilst attempting to cater to longtime fans of the series with shallow horror motifs and rehashed scenarios that look to capitalize on nostalgia in lieu of quality. In trying to cater to such a wide demographic, the game became a lifeless husk, lacking in identity, shambling toward anyone who would show it the faintest bit of interest. It was definitely a time to be worried about the direction that the series would be headed in the future and whether or not it would be able to survive such colossal missteps, but alas today we find ourselves at the outset of what could potentially be a second renaissance for Resident Evil. After playing through Resident Evil 7 a number of times, I can say that this is a game that's truly worthy of the Resident Evil name in spite of a few baffling game design flaws here and there. The most egregious of which being the unskippable cutscenes. There is absolutely no reason for a game in this day and age to have unskippable cutscenes, especially considering that the developers clearly intended for players to experience the campaign multiple times in order to gain access to unlocks. I'm very much hoping for some sort of patch or mod in the near future that allows us to skip all of the story sequences because as enjoyable as RE7's story may be, it quickly becomes grating to slog through on subsequent playthroughs. There are also a number of places where unwarranted damage is forced upon the player in order to cater to the story which is almost always an indication of lazy game design in my opinion. It isn't a pervasive issue but it was notable enough for me to find myself annoyed by it but considering that I love being able to no damage games and that's sort of an esoteric want from a video game, this is likely an immaterial factor for most of you out there listening. RE7 is obviously not a perfect game by any means, however, if you grew up with classic Resident Evil which emphasized exploration, item management, puzzle solving, and survival, then this is very much a game worth looking into. The gamers who are likely to be most conflicted by RE7 are those who are introduced to the series by the more modern, bombastic, action-oriented entries in the series where the term survival horror became little more than a marketing tagline. Oddly enough, I believe that this is one of Resident Evil 7's greatest strengths. The fact that the developers were willing to alienate an entire swath of their fanbase was the only way for this series to truly acquire an identity of its own. Instead of going down the route that Resident Evil 6 did by haphazardly attempting to indulge everyone, Resident Evil 7 has a clear vision that is delineated throughout. This isn't an action game with horror elements, it isn't a Gears of War style third person shooter, it isn't a variant of Call of Duty zombie mode, no, this is an unapologetic survival horror game through and through. One of the most interesting aspects of Resident Evil 7 is its shift in perspective from both a game design and marketing standpoint. Since the game is played in first person, Capcom could effectively take advantage of the popularity of indie first person horror games, especially on platforms such as YouTube. Video games such as Amnesia The Dark Descent, Outlast, Slender, and even PT have been able to garner attention with very little effort due to the fact that people love to watch others play horror games. This marketing ploy was also somewhat 
somewhat detrimental because while first person horror games are popular, especially amongst non-gamers, most hardcore fans of horror have been disillusioned by the oversaturation of first person titles within the genre. Most indie horror games tend to be little more than shallow jump scare simulators designed specifically for popular YouTube personalities to play through for clicks. If this was the design philosophy that a new entry in the Resident Evil franchise was to be implementing, then the series would have truly been lost to the ages. Thankfully Capcom used this shift in perspective as a marketing ploy to garner attention as opposed to a template to design their game around, and a successful ploy it was. Even I was somewhat taken aback by the supposed new direction that the series was taking, especially after having played through the first two demos. It wasn't until I played through the third and final demo for Resident Evil 7 that I began noticing what tactics Capcom was employing and how the game would successfully expand upon the ideas of the classic franchise. Ever since that third demo, I was cautiously optimistic about Resident Evil 7, but after truly delving into the game, I can say that this is an excellent experience and one of the greatest survival horror games I've played in recent memory. The shift in methodology from intense action to survival brings the series back to its roots with some truly frightening and adrenaline pumping moments. Very much like the classic games, you are initially left to fend for yourself with little more than a knife and your wits about you. However, as the game progresses, you will be forced to encounter new and intimidating threats that will force you to overcome your fears through perspicacity, ingenuity, and skill. It is this sense of growth that has been overtly lacking in the latest entries in the series. Your character evolves from being overwhelmingly helpless in an environment that wants them dead at every turn, to an empowered badass who is willing to face their fears head on in spite of the consequences. The return of item boxes, inventory management, limited ammunition, heavy kinesthetics, and safe rooms somehow gives Resident Evil 7 a unique feel amongst its contemporaries by simply modernizing classic design philosophies of yesteryear. There are no chapters, there are no weapon upgrades, enemies no longer drop items after death, and there isn't any sort of merchant running around with a selection of good things on sale, stranger. Very much like the classic franchise, environments are brimming with items, weapons, and secrets that can only be discovered through thorough exploration. Ammunition and currency are especially well hidden since RE7 doesn't denote important objects with a conspicuous glimmer like in the classic games. You may often find yourself searching every nook and cranny of the game world to make sure that you haven't missed some magnum rounds, lockpicks, or coins which can be used to purchase character buffs and weapons. The return of a large Metroidvania-esque environment for players to explore and become familiar with was one of the things that I wanted most from the series since its shift from survival to action, and thankfully in that respect, Resident Evil 7 does an admirable job at reintegrating this engrossing design philosophy. Each locale has its own distinct feel, with a number of primary and secondary enemies and hazards tailored specifically to the environment in question. This allows for a range of interesting and varied challenges for players to overcome, especially during the first half of the experience, where cautious exploration is key to survival. The locations feel like earnest extensions of the members of the Baker family, successfully elucidating facets of each of the characters in unique and natural ways. Instead of being forced to sit back as the characters monologue about their intentions, players are allowed to organically explore and examine richly detailed surroundings which allude to some truly frightening and tragic events in the process. Things aren't as simple as they may initially seem, and Resident Evil 7 does an excellent job at keeping you guessing while somehow respecting and paying homage to many of the franchise's most iconic plot points. What I was most pleasantly surprised by was how well developed and likable all of the characters in the game were, from Jack Baker's unhinged sadism to Marguerite Baker's mercurial affections, there are some truly memorable characters that are intriguing and fun to interact with, and I would absolutely love to see Jack Baker included in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Please Capcom make that happen, it would be amazingly hilarious. Moving on, the threat that the Bakers, and by extension the Molded represent to you, the player, is visceral and urgent while somehow managing to feel balanced and fair. Sadly, however, this is where Resident Evil 7 is vastly lacking when compared directly to its progenitors because while each of the enemy types are imposing and challenging, there are only about four main enemies in the game, each of which being simple variants of a single creature. 
Even the original Resident Evil had far more enemies stalking its environments from the iconic zombies, zombie dogs, hunters, spiders, crows, sharks, mutated plants, and chimeras. It's exceedingly disappointing for a franchise that is known for excellent monster design to take such a minimalistic approach, but that seems to be one of the primary ideas that drives Resident Evil 7's design philosophy. Minimalism. This design philosophy tends to be a double-edged sword because while it definitely makes for a truly unique and fun experience that returns the franchise to its roots, it can also make Resident Evil 7 feel shallow and empty in certain respects because it doesn't take its concepts far enough to reach their full potential. For example, Resident Evil 7 features a large and detailed environment that is interconnected naturally, however the game world isn't as expansive and varied as prior entries in the series. What's here is definitely well designed and interesting, however the game would have benefited tremendously from at least two or three more locations to explore, and of course at least a handful more enemies to struggle against. I would have loved to see a few more boss battles as well, but the bosses that do exist in the game are excellently designed set pieces that make the most out of the insanity that the Resident Evil universe can provide. This minimalism also extends to the game length and the unlockable modes or lack thereof. If you don't purchase the season pass, you will only have access to the main campaign, three difficulty levels, and a few in-game unlocks, including infinite ammunition and some super weapons. The game should have included the nightmare and Ethan Must Die modes as completion bonuses because even the classic games in the series included unlockable scenarios and battle modes as rewards for skill players to unlock. At the very least, the Not A Hero DLC will be a free download, but I suppose this is more so an issue with modern gaming business practices than it is with Resident Evil 7 itself, but either way players should have been given something more as far as I'm concerned. Resident Evil 7 is a title that is going to polarize fans of the franchise for years to come, very much like Resident Evil 4 did back in the mid-2000s. However, unlike Resident Evil 4, 7 is a far more flawed game, ironically constrained by its lack of ambition. There are some truly bold and intriguing design elements here that are excellently presented and implemented, however with every successful design element comes a lack of conceptual development obstructing the title from reaching its true potential. Resident Evil 7 is a step in the right direction and is very much worthy of your time and attention, especially if you're a fan of classic survival horror. It's great to see the franchise go back to its roots and actually attempt to innovate again, for better or worse. There is plenty to love here for both fans and newcomers alike if you're willing to give the game a chance. Don't let the shift in perspective fool you. This isn't an Outlast or Amnesia clone, this is Resident Evil through and through. Cheesy, violent, frightening, and intriguing, it's everything that a survival game should be sans the fixed camera angles. With that said, what are your thoughts on Resident Evil 7? Did you enjoy it? Do you hate the new first person perspective? Do you think that Resident Evil should go back to third person or even fixed camera angles for the next major entry? Do you miss Leon's glorious hair? Whatever your thoughts are, be sure to comment below and let me know what you think. Once again, my name is Atrophy of Soul. Thank you very kindly for listening and be sure to have yourselves a fine day.